Housing on Cape Cod, the high price of doing nothing. With me today, CEO Alisa Galazzi from Housing Assistance Corporation and David Quinn, Assistant Director of Housing Development for Housing Assistance Corporation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. So there's a white paper, um, and it yes. looks like there was an enormous amount of research that's come from this. Let's start with why. Why? Um, as you may remember, I've been the CEO for a little um, under two years, coming up on my two-year mark. And so we've been looking at the agency strategically, looking at the marketplace strategically, and trying to understand the whole continuum of housing and continuum of the housing stock. And one development that's occurred in the past six months or so um, at the agency is we have had more clients coming in who are stably housed, have great jobs, and are being displaced. And we started to wonder, is this anecdotal? Is this situational? Um, and so we started, we decided, like, let, let's, let's peel, ba peel it back, um, look at some facts, look at the trends, and try to understand, is this, a, is this something we should be concerned with and try to mitigate, or is this just situational? So this was something that you saw in the house, uh, the offices of Housing Assistance Corporation, where traditionally you've dealt with very low-income people right. trying to find stable housing, and all of a sudden it's stable folks that are displaced out of housing as well. David, tell right. us a little bit about this research and how this this sure. actually came about. Yeah, so this probably won't be any surprise to anyone out in the housing market mm -hmm. living it. I think everyone has their own Cape Cod housing story oh, for sure. of, of struggling right. to find to find a place to rent, but we. Um, you know, we start. You know, we see reports like from the Cape Cod Commission in the town that kind of talk about the magnitude of the problem and the affordable housing crisis. Um, and so, yeah, again, as Lisa said, we just really wanted to dig in. And before we jumped into any one action, in terms of you know what what's HAC going to do to address this problem, we wanted to really understand it. So, we kind of started out as like a fact gathering mission, pulling together different reports that are out there from different sources. Um, we also wanted to talk to people in the community, so we went around and talked to. Realtors, we talked to property managers, landlords, business exactly. owners, employees that at, at a, at a mid-level and high-end employees, um, and what we found was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, our our marketplaces, Cape Codders don't like change, right? Like <laughs> I've lived here for 17 years, and I live in Orleans. I love my little village, and I'm one of those people of like keep it cute, keep it quaint, keep my Cape Cod. But the fact is, Cape Cod is changing and it's changing faster than we have been able to keep um, pace with. Mm. In fact, over the past six years, mm -hmm. yep. we have lost 3,000 year-round um, housing units, and we've gained 6,000? 5,000. 5,000, <laughs> we gained <laughs> 5,000 um, seasonal homes. So that shift in the inventory um, is something that we should all be really paying attention and to. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I think housing's always been tough on the Cape. I mean, it, it th this is nothing new, but we just started seeing it more and more at all income levels, and we, we, we knew there's something was going on. And I think when you really dig, you know, dig down, it's that seasonal market. More and more people are taking their second homes and trying to rent them out, and it's easier to do than it whatever it was before right. through yeah. Airbnb and VRBO and all sorts of different online options. So I think that's one of the big drivers of this. Yeah. Um, is, right. is how easy it is to rent it out weekly. And yeah. we're considered a safe investment now. Yes. Cape Cod is considered a place to really invest your money and invest in real estate if you want to diversify your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so and we're, we're seeing that in the, the tenants that have been long-term tenants coming in saying, I am displaced, I need a place to rent, and oh, by the way, there is no place to rent. It's less than 1% vacancy. So and um, if, you fi if they do find something, it's $2,000 a month. Right. So. Um, so it's the lack of availability, which obviously drives up those rental prices. So it's there, there's very little available, and the stuff stuff that is available is not really an attainable option for a lot of people. Let's break this down a little bit because you know we've always heard that well, you know it's lower or, or low income people that can't find housing, or m now it's young professionals that can't find housing. Let's just break this down. It's lifestyle housing. If you're looking to downsize and you're in your 60s, there's no place to go either. It's right, not right. that this is a an age or a demographic um, issue here. There's just no place to go. Well, right. what is it, 82% of yeah. our homes are single-family homes on the Cape. And right. in some cases, that works well because of the environment and the l land protection, and w we don't necessarily want to change all of it. But right. there are other areas where you can apply some density and have more people living within an acre um, and, and, and get, get more housing out of it. Right. So you have the smaller in units. In the paper, we call it a housing monoculture. So there's pretty much 82% 
single family homes. Um, so if you're a uh, senior looking to downsize or a young professional who wants a one you know, studio apartment, it's just not available. I mean, it, you have to yeah. go out and find roommates. That's the only way you could make it work on yeah. the Cape. So we definitely need more housing in general, but specifically a lot more housing in that one and two bedroom apartment category. Right. And that's li let's really break this down a little bit too, is that the, you know, the single family home isn't necessarily a good solution for everyone, right? right? right. You right. know, yeah. if, I'm a, if I'm a young professional, man, I want a studio apartment, I want right. to be close yeah. to the nightlife in Hyannis or Absolutely. another town. Um, and then as a senior, I may want a community where there's people around me that, you know, I have a little condo mm -hmm. and somebody shovels my driveway, <laughs> <laughs> right? So talk a little bit about some numbers here, because I think that usually is one of the things that people pay attention to is you say there's less than 1% of stock now. That's yeah. just a crazy Shocking, number. Yeah, so yeah. to, to kind of give you a comparison, so a healthy rental market has between 5 and 7% vacancy. That's just sort of kind of like the unemployment rate. You know, it's like there's a healthy mm -hmm. uh, vacancy okay. rate just like turning mm -hmm. over of properties. If it's 1%, that really means that there's nothing available. Okay. As soon as anything comes available, it's rented. You know, so it's not uncommon for a property owner who lists their property on Craigslist to get 100, 200 emails when they list it. Wow. Um, and so that's a lot, if from the property owner side, that's a lot to sort through. But I mean, think about on the renter side, you're sending out emails trying, you know, trying to find a place to live, you're getting no responses. I mean, that's the reality of the, the housing market right now, so. Right. Um, so the trickle down piece of this, I hate to use that phrase because yeah. yeah. it always makes me yeah. cringe. Politics. But, yeah. but, mm -hmm. it, but it does, there is this trickle down. So what happens when we don't have available housing? I mean, the Cape's got to run, right? I mean, yeah. we well need that's people yeah. to work. What happens? People people leave. They they are living in Plymouth and they're commuting um, onto the Cape or they're, they're living in a, in a less expensive place. Or they, you know, the m in order to keep Cape Cod competitive, we have to attract and retain a good workforce. Um, right. And people who can get jobs elsewhere and have the, um, you know, better cost of living are, are, are leaving, and we're seeing that. Right, um, right now we have like 25,000 people who commute onto the Cape to work here. Yeah, it's about a quarter of the workforce about a quarter is commuting of from off Cape. That's just insane. It yeah. is, and, and, but think of like the people in live in Orleans and outwards. They're not commuting all the way, you know, past that rotary mm -hmm. right. because it, they're, it, it's too far when they don't have to commute as far and, you know, there's, there's more jobs right. closer to where they live. So the impact is, is, is impressive. Right, and, and what I guess kind of got me, I read this report th uh, today and what's gotten me is that there's no prisoners, I, literally no. across the spectrum of business on Cape Cod, from yep. municipalities True. right down to, we always know the restaurants and the tourism industry. But has the banks had, and. But the banks and, you know, your mom and pop shops and sure. your landscaping Absolutely. and your building trades. I think that's Healthcare. what might, that's what might be the most biggest. surprising to people if you read this, is that, right. you know, there's this perception that it's yet slower middle income, people that are having trouble finding housing. But what we found in talking to yep. bankers and the healthcare industry, is that they're offering good paying jobs, 80,000 plus jobs. Yeah, executive, executive level, level jobs. jobs. And uh, candidates are saying, I'd love to, but I, I can't find a place to live. Can't come and here. And I'm not ready to buy yet. Even, you know, even if their salary maybe would allow them to buy. Right. You know, you're not or they can buy more elsewhere. You know, they, they start looking at yeah. other regions that are as attractive and yeah. other jobs that are as so attractive. So it becomes a real factor in someone's decision if they're gonna take a job here, if they're not from here. Right. Um, and they don't have that personal connection to it. And you're trying to recruit talent, um, it becomes a problem. Sure. But also just for local Cape Codders who are, you know, born and raised here and who, um, or, or that live here now, right? It, it's hard to c imagine how are you going to afford your life and save for retirement and raise your kids and work at jobs that aren't as much as you could make elsewhere, but your housing cost is a lot higher. So mm -hmm. it's right. the whole the whole picture, the whole economics for a family and for the community that's important for us to be talking about. Right, and one of those figures that I want you to tell people about is 30% of their income is going to housing? Well, that's the average. That th that's, that's the average. That's people sort of, yeah, that's sort of the number that we, you, you know, the kind of the standard you'd use to determine. That's healthy. 30% yeah, is healthy. That, like anything over 30%, you start, your your house right. poor, you right. know. You, you have the possibility of housing instability in your future. Right. Um, and yeah, the quality of life, so. Right. But if you're paying, you know, over $2,000 a month, you know, you're, you're well over 30%. So um, that, that's definitely, it's very common to go over that. We, right. we see it all the time. So we know we have the problem, right? Yeah. And the cost of doing nothing is really, really high. So 
you didn't just do a numbers paper. You kind of looked at the problem and you said, what are some of the solutions? What are some of the things? We don't want just one solution. We need multiple solutions because it's a multi-tiered problem. Mm -hmm. So where are we going? Well, we also looked at other communities that are a little further ahead of the curve, okay. right? You know, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, some um, communities in Colorado, and started to, to anticipate what what's happened for them could potentially happen for us. Higher price of goods and services, lack of services for retirees. You know, there's a fear factor, if you will, of if you can't house your workforce and the people that need to keep our community and our economy going, that, that starts to have a real impact on daily life. Right. Yeah. So it, w it became, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to be like the, you know, fear mongers, but it, it can right. be a little bit scary looking ahead of this. This could be a community that isn't available to any of us who are living here now. Right, and none of us, none of us want that. We work so hard to live here, and we love so much living on Cape Cod. But right. how do we preserve it and protect it and um, create a contained workforce? Uh, some of the strategies that we we looked at, we have a long-term strategies and short-term strategies. Um, right. The long-term are obvious, mm -hmm. right? We've been talking about them for years. Yep. Zoning, 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 infrastructure, right. zoning and infrastructure, and mm -hmm. they, the two conversations not happening in silos. If we can get wastewater. Um, conversation to be happening at the same time or, or the realization that it impacts housing and those conversations happening together, that's going to be more beneficial for the community and for the right. town and for our region. Um, so those, those conversations have to be um, in earnest um, right. coming together. And let's just give some folks some examples of what, like what could happen where you might be able to have a uh, three or four story apartment building in a, an area that's already sewered. Well, let's not even go three or four stories because that really right. can be scary. Two stories. How about like commercial <laughs> on one level and up above apartments, there right? It doesn't go. have yep. to be, um, right. it doesn't have, we don't have to look off Cape to, right. to f try to find something that fits, that doesn't fit into our, our region. Yeah, and, we, and, and the, the other thing is we also recognize that not every place in every town is going to be appropriate for something like this. So exactly. We, we talk about how, you know, there's a reason that, you know, the zoning in some areas is set up to protect the environment. You know, there are certain areas that, we, you know, we need to, need to maintain. For sure. And it's natural beauty. But there are other areas, like village centers, where it w would make sense to start thinking about um, how can we add more housing units, again, above stores, right. accessory dwelling units, so sort of like your in-law apartment, right. allow people to do that uh, more easily would, would go a long way. Yeah, no, d to, to the accessory dwelling point, mm -hmm. David, is that that is something in a short term that we can add inventory quickly into the marketplace. Right. Um, if, we can, if we can allow people who already have a home without adding any more bedrooms, they already have their septic, like can we, can we get an in-law apartment? Um, that will right. help um, relieve some of the pressure in the marketplace for sure. Right, mm -hmm. and those are great spots, especially if you're thinking if it might be a senior. I mean, having somebody on property with for you sure. would be a, yeah. a, a great solution for their needs as well. Or even a, even a second homeowner who wants somebody on the, the property sure. year round, right? There's a lot of scenarios that it, that it could work out for families, children coming back, you know, my got one of my daughters getting ready for high school or leaving, graduating from high right. school, I'm like, maybe I could get an accessory joint so she could come back and right. work and live here. Um, Things like that. So there's a lot of different, you know, scenarios for yeah, people. Yeah, just letting people be creative with their properties and, you know, doing it in a way that, you know, works for them. That works for them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, the second yeah. homeowner who, uh, more often than not, that property is vacant for most of the year, there can be some incentives for them to rent year-round rather yeah. than short-term yeah. rentals, Absolutely. correct? Yep. So that you're leading us to our our, our new program, yep. which is Rental 360. Rent 365. Rent 365. We've changed right. the name a hundred times. David knows more about <laughs> it than I do at this point. Yeah. Rent 365. But okay. the idea is that there are 60,000 seasonal homes in our region. Right. right? Can any of them convert to a year-round tenancy? I mean, obviously, waterfront property, no. People that come um, throughout the year and use their property, no. But I live in Orleans. There are two homes in my neighborhood. I've lived in the same house for 15 years. I don't know if I've ever seen them there a week, the whole 15 years. Right. They don't come for whatever life situation, um, live out of state, maybe it's owned by a trust. So we're looking like for that sweet spot. Can we, can we find any mm -hmm. of those um, homeowners that would convert or consider converting to a lease? This is just amazing information. We're going to have more conversations about this. Near and dear to my heart as a Chapter 40B, one of the first yeah. on the Cape. Good for you. Um, <laughs> and we are in that position now where we want to downsize but can't. Mm. Um, you know, we have an affordable house that we could get back into the market, but yeah. there's no place for us to go. Exactly. Right. Right. So, you know, let's all work together. So that's sure. my next question is yeah. how can we work together? What can the average citizen who, you know, maybe wants to do something or learn more, what can they do? 
So one of the short-term things that we're doing is we're really increasing our advocacy effort because we believe that the, the, the higher the capacity, the more the educated populace, the more that we all know what's happening and the impact that it has on our individual lives and on our children and on the life that we so much enjoy living here, the more motivated we're going to be right, to take action and to help guide our, um, our, our municipal leaders into doing the things that we believe are important. Right. So we're going to increase our advocacy effort. People can join, join us on that. Um, if you know somebody who has a, a seasonal rental on your street, let sure. them know that, that, that Hack is willing to pay a $1,000 bonus to if you're willing to take an empty house and turn it into a year-on rental. Okay. I mean, that would be, be one really right. quick way to do it. Yep, come to our website. We've got, more, we've got the paper online. We've got information on Rent365 online right. um, and, and an opportunity for people to get involved. That, that's really, this is Cape Cod, right? We're grassroots. It's it's right. hand-to-hand combat, so to speak. Like we've got to have people out there delivering the message and um, helping helping to guide the decision I making. Think, I think people tend to kind of sit back and wait to get involved until something happens in town that they don't want. Right. So we're exactly. trying to encourage people to learn for about sure. this issue. So go to the Housing Institute, learn about learn about the issue and understand it, and then go advocate for what you do want to see and where you want to see it. Right, and I know yeah. that um, on a lot of town warrants uh, last year and coming up this year as well are going to be those accessible um, uh, accessory units mm -hmm. yep. um, are going to be on your town warrants. So go to town meeting, get your voice heard. Can they get a hold of this uh, piece? Um, is Absolutely. this going to be available for people to read? It is. It's uh, capehousing.org. If okay. you go there, it'll be posted online. Yep. So we, we developed a special website where we're going to... Um, have the, have the report and have information on Rent 365, and people can sign up and uh, send us an email. We'll be back in touch. Fantastic yeah. work, folks. Anything yeah. else you want to give people uh, to end the show? Um, n I mean, get involved. Yeah, just get involved. We, we all love Cape Cod, and, and, and I, I, I understand the sentiment that we don't want it to change, but the fact is it's changing, and we really need to get involved in, in, in uh, architecture of those changes in order to retain the beautiful place that we live and want to live. Thank you.